Yo, Ben here. Want to keep track of how many times a day you fill up your water bottle with just a flick of your wrist? Let me show you how. To get started with that, and a whole lot more, in this video I want to cover how to get started using IFT to automate your house. IFT stands for If This Then That. And if you haven't used it before, I would totally recommend it. Adding it to Home Assistant is super easy, and it'll let you start automating with hundreds of new devices and services. Getting started with IFT is a breeze. First, go to IFT.com and create an account and log in. Once logged in, navigate to the Channels tab in the top bar. Now, search for Maker. Under DIY Electronics, you should see something called Maker. Once you've selected the Maker channel, go ahead and select Connect. Now, if it will generate an API key, we're going to need to go ahead and put this in our Home Assistant configuration. You can copy the key by clicking it. This should open it in a new window in the top bar. Go ahead and copy the key. One thing I want to point out is that that API key is unique to you, so you should be careful when you're sharing your configuration with people. You don't want to go posting it all over the internet, like I did. Once you've copied a key, you can go ahead and put it into your Home Assistant configuration like this. You'll say ift colon and then key and then you'll put your key there. Once done, go ahead and hit save and then go back to your Home Assistant instance and restart it. If by accident you do share your IFT key, you can regenerate it by disconnecting the channel and then reconnecting it. When you reconnect it, it'll generate a new key. Now, I'll go ahead and make sure that Home Assistant is back up. And it is, and that's great. I can see on the Services tab that the IFT trigger service is available. So, now we're ready to start creating our first automations. There's two ways to automate with IFT. Yo, I would just like to take a second and apologize for this crazy camera action. My uh, camera did not record, and so you are viewing a screen capture of my camera output uh, on my monitor. So that's not ideal. I promise I will eventually learn how to make a good video. Just hang tight. You can send a message to IFT from Home Assistant, or IFT can send a message to Home Assistant. The first automation I want to make is to turn on my computer when I send IFT a text message. To get started making our first recipe, I'll go to My Recipes and then select Create a Recipe. Now, here comes the cool part. I'll select this. Then, in the Search Channels field, I'll type SMS. There's two SMS options. I'm going to use the one that's in the green bubble. It's worth noting that sometimes in IFT, there's multiple ways to do the same things. The Android SMS feature utilizes the IFT companion app on my phone and can be used to intercept text messages sent to my phone number. In this case, I just want to send a text message to IFT and have it turn on my computer. So I will use the native SMS service. Now I'll select send IFT and SMS tagged. And then in the trigger fields, I'll say turn on my PC. Then I'll select create trigger. Now I'll go ahead and hit that. In the search channels field, I'll type maker and select the Maker channel. Then I'll select Make a Web Request. Now, I know this can seem a little daunting at first, but it's actually super straightforward. I want to go to the Home Assistant website and look for the IFT component. Towards the bottom, you'll see an exact example of what you need to put in the web request in order to make it work with Home Assistant. If you followed my Tasker tutorial, this should look super familiar. You'll need to put your Raspberry Pi IP address, keeping in mind this is its external IP address and then forward slash API, forward slash services, and then you can call any service that you want inside of Home Assistant. If you don't know what services are available, you can go back to your Home Assistant instance and then select the services developer tool. There's tons of options. For my recipe today, I'm gonna to use the switch turn on service, and then I'm gonna call the entity ID of a switch I created for my computer to turn it on using the wake on land feature. So going back to IFT, in the URL field, I'll type the following information, HTTPS, my Raspberry Pi IP address, and then forward slash API, forward slash services, forward slash switch, forward slash turn on, and then my password. Under method, I'll select post, and then under content type, I'll select application forward slash JSON. Then in the body, I'll type the entity ID of the switch I'm trying to turn on, and then I'll select create action. 
Now, I'm just noticing here that it's asking me to verify my phone number, so I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, now I'll go back to my recipes. Now, I'll go ahead and test to see if my recipe is working. You might notice on the right hand side that it tells you the number of times it's been run. It's a good thing to keep an eye on if you're having trouble getting your script to work. I'll go ahead and text if and see if my recipe is working. Sometimes it can be a little slow to update. So if I click this hamburger icon, I can go and check the log. And as you can see, it says personal recipe triggered. Sweet, I would show you my computer turning on, but it's already on because I'm recording this. So it's all right. If I change a little bit of the information, I can switch it to my desk fan. By the way, if you don't know the entity ID for the thing you're trying to control, you can go back to your Home Assistant instance and go to the States Developer Tool. And then on the right hand side, look on the list for the entity ID name you're looking for. Now, since I went ahead and switched this to my desk fan, I can show this to you a little bit easier. I have my fan and my phone, and I'm going to send that text message now. And there we go. Bada boom, bada bing. In my experience, the latency is about five to 15 seconds. And it can be a little unpredictable. So if it isn't always the best thing to use if you're in a circumstance where you need to turn something on immediately. So like for controlling your living room lights, but it does have a ton of capability and it's pretty cool for doing random things like turning on a computer when you're not home. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is how to trigger if from Home Assistant. In this case, I want to create an automation that tracks how many times a day I'm filling up my water bottle. To get started with that, I'm going to go back to IFT. First, I'll create a new recipe. Then I'll select this, and in the search channels, I'll search for Maker. Then I'll select Receive a Web Request. Then under Event Name, I'll just name it Drink Water. And then I'll select Create Trigger. Then I'll select that, and under search channels, I'll search for drive. The cool thing about this is I can actually update a spreadsheet every time I drink out of my water bottle. I'll select a pin to a document, and then the document name, I'll call it ift water, and I'll say what? The event name it'll say drank water when occurred at and then uh, I will take out all this extra value because I don't need it and then I'll select create action now I'm done and I'll select create recipe so when if is triggered from the maker channel it'll update the current time in a spreadsheet super cool now believe it or not we're almost done if you go back to the if component on home assistant You'll notice the way to call the maker channel is by using a service. This means that we don't actually need to do anything to our home assistant configuration in order to call it. We can go to our home assistant instance and then go to the services tool. I'll select if to trigger and then in the service data field, I'll fill it out exactly like it lays out here. And then under event name, I will say drink water and then select call service. Now, let me check my Google Drive to see if it updated the spreadsheet. And look, it looks like it did. Open the ift water page and yeah, it says what? Drank water, when? The exact timestamp. That's super cool. Using the services tab is cool, but it's not super useful. Let me show you how to trigger ift from a script inside of Home Assistant so you can add a button in the front end or call it from your phone and trigger a bunch of other events as well. The script should look something like this. You'll say script, and then you'll give your script a name, and you'll say sequence. Service will be ift.trigger, and then data, and then event, and you'll give it the event name for your ift recipe. And that's it. You hit save, and then you can restart Home Assistant. Nice, looks like Home Assistant's back up. And I'll go ahead and trigger my script. I'll give it a second or two to go through. Okay, and now I will check my spreadsheet. And bam, updated. One thing I wanna point out really quickly if you were paying attention 
is that my script is showing up under my scenes tab inside of Home Assistant. I went ahead and added this to my configuration ahead of time so that it would show up here. However, if you don't have groups set up yet, your script should show up on the Home tab. If you're ever looking for something in Home Assistant and can't find it, check out the developer tools. Scripts show up as a service, so if I scroll down, I should be able to find it. And bam, there it is. Script forward slash ift. Sweet! We're basically there. But there's one last piece of the puzzle. Firing up the Home Assistant UI every time I fill my water bottle is kind of a pain. Ideally, I'd like to be able to use my phone. And bonus, I'd like to be able to use my Android Wear watch. What I'm going to do is use Auto Wear on my watch that sends a message to Tasker when I shake my watch. Then, when Tasker receives that message, it'll initiate a task which sends an HTTP POST command to Home Assistant starting the script we just created. Then that will update ift and update the spreadsheet. It sounds really complicated, but it's really straightforward, and I already covered how to use Task with Home Assistant in my earlier video, so you can check that out. More on AutoWare is coming soon. Super cool. The final product should look something like this. And now I'll go check my spreadsheet. Opening up, bam, there it is. I guess, by the way, this is not a spreadsheet. This is actually a document, so sorry if you guys were freaking out the whole time. By the way, looking through the Drive channel on the IFT website, you can indeed use an actual spreadsheet and not a document. My bad. Now, I know this can seem a little over the top. Not everybody needs to track how many times a day they're filling up their water bottle in a spreadsheet, but there are thousands of things that you can do when you combo IFT and Home Assistant. The fun thing is that there's often many ways to do what you're trying to do, so there's really no wrong answer. At the end of the day, the best way is the way that works for you. I hope this video helps you get started with IFT and Home Assistant. IFT is a great service, and it pairs so well with Home Assistant. People should definitely check them out. If you have any questions or thoughts, let me know. I'm happy to help people as much as I can. And if you like this video, subscribe and share it. I continue to be blown away by how quickly this channel is continuing to grow. I mean, we just turned over 1,200 subscribers. That's crazy! As always, happy automating. Cheers! P.S. I'm sorry that this is another software-based video. I know I have a lot of subscribers that are waiting for a hardware-based video to come out again, like that fabled MQTT sensor node. But I promise that video is coming. I'm trying to figure out SolidWorks right now, so I have a cool 3D printed enclosure to share with you guys. But it takes a little bit of time, but if you stick around, I promise it's coming soon.